Good morning, friends. So, <clears throat> past couple days I didn't do one, even though I usually do them on Monday and Tuesday as well. But um, if some of you might not have noticed, it's Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish uh, holiday of the new year. Um, next week is also Yom Kippur, so I probably will not be able to do a Mornings with Wasics on Wednesday, I believe. So now I'm back today. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, someone gave me a request for to talk about climate change and how I think about you know all that good stuff that's happening in the world. And for the record, I will say that in terms of what I think is most harmful to the world, it's not climate change, it's mostly just pollution in general, right? So we have a lot of, um, you know, plastics and just other random assortments of wastes that are going out into the environment. And for me, I feel like that is the real... Uh, cause for concern is the amount of pollution, the amount of sewage, the amount of chemicals, and all this other garbage that we're just putting out into the earth. And climate change is sort of like, to me, this really small scale problem that um, can easily be fixed, and or not easily be fixed, I shouldn't say that, but I feel like that's definitely something that's more, uh, something I'm a lot more not a loss of words here. Have a much more positive outlook. And why I say that is mostly because we have this notion or this we have a lot of history in which we have a lot of these problems that have happened in the world. And there always seems to have been some sort of movement that slowly progresses beyond that state. Um, even though there's a lot of steps that we end up taking backwards to um, that basically hinder our progress, right? And I feel like that's the same thing with climate change. It's this thing that's really kind of only been an issue at hand or people talked about it in the past maybe 20 years, maybe less. Let's say like when Al Gore dropped that Inconvenient Truth documentary, that was when I first even heard of the term global warming or climate change. And that was in 2005, so that was 13 years ago. And, you know, people say we haven't done anything since then, and I would strongly disagree. The amount of, um, well, first of all, hybrid cars, electric cars, you have Tesla, you have so many new forms of renewable energy that are popping up that didn't exist 20 years ago, right? We have so many different forms of energy and electricity and gathering resources that are popping up quicker and quicker. And if you look at uh, what scientists say, where until we reach the tipping point where we can't go back or whatever, they say it takes it's going to take at least like 200 years before we hit that point. And, you know, while that is also a, a really long time, we'll all be dead by that point. There's a lot of reasons why I'm very optimistic with that time frame where I think that, okay, there probably we're probably going to fix it by then. Just by, first of all, the sheer logic that we have limited supply of oil, right? And, you know, we're obviously not going to run out of oil anytime soon, but... The thing that's going to happen with oil is that it's just progressively going to become more and more expensive. It's an inevitable, inevitable fact. Once these resources become more and more scarce, they're going to become a lot more expensive for people to purchase. And the more that happens, it'll just become more economically, you know, beneficial to just use renewable resources in the first place plastic will just become or not plastic oil will become too expensive and subsequently plastic will eventually become more expensive than a renewable source so that like if you use a biodegradable film made from plant matter or whatever eventually that will become cheaper than plastic because plastic will 
uh, become a lot more rare as oil becomes more expensive. So this notion of creating a lot of these economic plans and all this other kind of stuff to sort of um, make sure climate change is reversed, I feel, I don't think it's unnecessary, but I will say it's not the only thing that's going to like going to help it right it's just going to happen naturally throughout culture throughout just basic economics it's just not feasible to continue the way we're operating right now it's not good in the long term for businesses just on a purely practical matter if we destroy the earth um you know we're not going to be able to gather its resources to use them in business at all it'll just destroy the economy and I'm saying this on purely practical terms this isn't some you know connecting with mother nature and becoming one with Gaia or whatever which if you're into that or you appreciate that that's good it's nothing wrong with that at all but in terms of talking about this for people who are very practical and rationally based or people who are business minded you know you go to a business school they will not talk about environmental uh, preservation at all because it's not in the infrastructure or the structure of how we learn about business in general we sort of think about especially on a, an American way of looking at business it's very much short term kind of stuff we're looking at like five ten years down the road is this going to work for five ten years and if it does then it's like great we we're done now we can worry about that later um, you know but that isn't always the case with a lot of other cultures and how they do business. You know, sometimes people, let's say in Japan, they'll start a business and they're coming up with a business plan that'll last for like a hundred years almost, right? They're looking really long term. And being environmentally conscious, um, by the way, there's still a lot of issues with uh, Japan's business strategies. They're very, um, they pretty much don't have that sense of, maintaining uh, a healthy environment right and same thing with China they're very not uh, into this concept of renewable energy or anything like that which is just because they're a newly industrialized society and they're not used to um, this newfound culture of all right let's let's give back to what we've taken from the earth or whatnot right which is more of a, a western or um, Scandinavian type of thing if you go to Norway and Sweden they're all very progressive over there right about the environment and such so talking about climate change for one it's economically uh, you know it's eventually just the fact of using oil and greenhouse gases to power ourselves are just going to become obsolete in a sense so there are already so many different alternatives and they're only going to become more and more developed as time goes on and you know there's no reason to be pessimistic about this sort of thing in fact this is a time where people should be incredibly optimistic about the future despite you know what's on the surface level you know we have all these uh you know greedy capitalists or whatever who are polluting the earth and you want to stop them you know, the best way to do that is to just, you know, play your own game, do your own thing to help the environment. And if you're in a position of power of owning a business, then you can do the same thing. And that's when you really change the world, right? Um, you know, a lot of people don't like Henry Ford because he was like a racist and an anti-Semite or whatever. But he was the one who started the the forty hour work week, right? He's the one who said that Saturday Sunday should be time off, should be the weekend. It shouldn't just be one day; it should be two days. And he started that, and that's become the norm. There's no like legal obligation to make people um, work only five days a week, or maybe there is. I'm not sure. I'm not a, a law student, but to my um, basic knowledge there isn't anything like that so if you want to change the environment instead of uh, expecting the government to do something about it 
really it has to start with how you sort of run your life and how you can maybe start your own business if you have the opportunities to do so or if you have the courage to do so it takes a lot of risk um, and there's already countless amounts of people who are doing that so when it comes to climate change um, I am pretty much optimistic on that point however pollution is another issue which even still I'm optimistic about they discovered this uh, I don't know, this worm that can fully digest and consume plastic material, right? I mean, this is like huge, you know, this is just, this popped up as like a little blurb on like my, uh, my live feed or whatever from like, uh, um, like, wow, science is amazing Facebook page, right? But this is like a big deal. If you can like decompose plastic using these worms, then this whole notion of like, oh yeah, every plastic bag is just, it's gonna take a thousand years to decompose, blah, 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 blah. Well, it's like, no, now it's not. Now there's like significant evidence because the reason why any matter on earth, if like a human dies and is left out in the dirt, it's gonna decompose within like a year, maybe like a lot less. I don't know what the, the science behind that is, but specifically because there are life forms that digest and consume the human body and turn it into you know other things they turn it into dirt or fertilizer or whatever right so that's the same thing if there's life forms that are now being developed that are now being evolved to consume plastic that isn't just a small thing that's like oh cool like this is fun it's like no this is like going to change how the environment works right we're going to be able to actually do something about all this waste that's just sitting out there in the ocean or in the forest or wherever the fuck right so that's my thoughts on climate change and pollution uh and i hope you have a wonderful day